People used to think of giraffes just as zoological oddities. And I suppose they are that, but when you understand about giraffes, their oddity becomes explainable. They're specialists. They're good at doing one particular thing very well, and that is reaching tall trees. They can get the leaves that nothing else can get. And so their long neck and their long legs becomes very explainable. But we are specialised in other ways. Our specialisations are largely those of intelligence, brain and hand, because that used to be a foot which has become freed up for manipulating tools. And those two work together. That's how we survive so well. But we still have to get around. And when we do, we have to use our feet. Inside the feet are the same bones that you find in the hand. There's one bone there, two bones there, a whole lot of little bones in the wrist, and eventually five fingers or toes. And they, in us, are very unspecialized. We have a primitive foot. You see, when you lumber around the world like us, specialized in other ways, we use the classic sort of flat-footed stance. The heels on the ground, so is the sole, and so are the toes. And it's shared with us by things like the wombat, which is specialized for digging, not walking around, and uh, things like the bear, which lumber around as well. It's the flat-footed stance, but all the bones are there. Now, the animals that hunt have to go fast, and you know what you do when you run. You get up on your toes. You run like that because your legs are longer, you go faster, and there's less friction with the ground. And the hunting animals, those that hunt for a living all the time, have legs permanently like that. If you look at the hind leg of your cat or dog, or a lion or a tiger, anything that hunts, you'll find that it has a heel pretty well halfway up the leg. And furthermore, those five toes have usually become reduced to four, less friction. Well, the animals that they hunt have to run even faster still, and they've gone one better by getting right up on tiptoe like a ballerina. And you'll find that the nail that we have, which is fairly slight, has in those animals become huge. It's a hoof. And there will either be four toes reducing to two, you'll get that in the, the cow and the sheep and the goat, or the giraffe, or perhaps even one, as in the horse, with one gigantic nail forming the hoof on the end. Well, those are the three classic ways that feet have adapted to moving around on land. Flat-footed, toe-footed, or tiptoe-footed. But there are other specializations too. For example, climbing animals like possums and uh, monkeys have, rather like us, gripping feet. Animals that fly, the bats, have hands like us, but between these enormously long fingers are stretched flaps of skin, and they have now become wings. But the bones are all there, as they are in our own hands. And those that swim have the same bones packed into wide, flat, blade-like flippers. And amongst those animals is the sea lion. Doesn't look a lot like it, but that front flipper is really a hand. Just look at the way it's actually bent back on itself. You can see all those five fingers inside the flipper are pointing backwards. And with that big webbing spread across them, it forms a very effective swimming device. I want to know. Curiosity.